We want every Saturday to continue to mean something in the new era of college football. Doesn't the SEC possibly staying in an eight-game conference schedule to continue to play cupcakes and create tiebreaker nightmares fly in the face of that? That's Ryan from Wyoming, Pennsylvania. Interesting town name there. I don't know what the nickname of Wyoming is. So here's what's happening down in the SEC. They've been going back and forth about this. You have probably seen this. I'm not going to rehash what the debate is. Well, I guess I am. Some folks want to play eight conference games and four out of conference. Some folks want to play nine conference games and three out of conference. And what I have told you for a while is I didn't think it was going to be as clear cut as it was being made out to be. And I also think that there are several more dynamics in the room than are being admitted by either side. The one side that wants to stay at eight, uh, you're shying away from competition. I know you have your reasons, but you're shying away from competition and you're probably not putting the best quality product on the field. The folks who just automatically say you ought to play nine, period, and there is no debate. Yes, there is debate. And here would be my main point of contention. If I were an SEC head coach, a lot of them are worried about making a bowl game every year. So let's put that on the table. That wouldn't be my concern, but some of them at certain programs, they're concerned that if they have to play nine conference games a year and they're, all, they're already hovering around that six win per season mark, they think that could keep them out of bowl eligibility, which costs them money. Voila, it always comes back to that M word. But that wouldn't be my main point of contention. If I were in the eight and no more camp, if I didn't want to play nine conference games, I would simply say, what benefit is there for us? Yes, you say it'll make us more money. It'll, it'll give us a better TV product. But Really, we're already swimming in cash down here. Here's what I would want to know. Can you guarantee me that if I beef up my strength of schedule voluntarily, that you on the back end with your committee, that you will guarantee me you can properly interpret that? Because right now, we live in one of those cultures, and if you're a college football fan who is non-casual, you know what I'm talking about, where we've still got a pervasive you are what your record says you are, foolish viewpoint on this sport held by many. Now, if you're new to this particular show, you are what your record says you are is one of the great lies that is told about college football. This is not pro sports, and we've already talked about this a lot, so I'm not going down that road again either, but I just want to remind you, picture this. You got a lot of folks out there who are criticizing the SEC for not going to nine conference games per year, and those are the same people that if LSU were to add a Georgia any given year, or Georgia were to add an Oklahoma any given year, and they lost that game and they were a two-loss team, those are the same people who would say, oh, th no, th they can't have a top four seed. No, they can't be ranked that high. They're a two-loss team. Never taking into consideration what the two losses were. Who were they against? How many top 20 or 25-ish teams did you beat? So that crowd that believes you are what your record says you are, you're the last folks I want to hear from when we're talking about whether the SEC should go to eight games or nine games. Here's the other thing. The other thing is there's this criticism about the SEC that they have a cupcake game, which most of them do. And it, it's always said in a vacuum. Like it, you, could have, you could have Alabama or you could have Auburn or someone. They'll, they'll play first off the SEC West. And if you're not Alabama and you're in the West, you have to play Bama too. And so you'll play all those teams. Then normally they've got a really good out-of-conference opponent. I mean, I'm looking at the future schedules. Pretty much every one of them is loaded up in the out-of-conference. And then you'll throw a UT Chattanooga in there. And people who are smart enough to know better, but they just want to make an intellectually dishonest counterpoint, they'll say, look at this. They're playing Cupcake City. They're playing UT Chattanooga. Yes, they are. Who else are they playing? E My point is, even with the Cupcake Week, the SEC, by and large, has the toughest strength of schedule metrics in the country. So you're asking the conference that already plays the toughest schedule to voluntarily, just for the good of the game, up their strength of schedule and add a ninth conference game. I don't know which way it's going to go. We're recording this on, what is it, Wednesday afternoon. I don't know which way that's going to go, but I don't think it's as clear cut as people are making it out to be. It's not solvable in a tweet. If it was, it would already be handled. So there's a lot of politicking, there's a lot of angling and selfish interests, yes, in the room. I don't know which way it's going to go. But I do, I do think even if they stay at eight, it's not like they're going to stay at eight and load up on a bunch of, of Eastern Michigans for their out-of-conference slate. And for those of you who say, oh yeah, they will, they do it already. They don't. They don't do that already. Anytime 
someone comes at me like that and I'll press them to where they actually have to go to Google or go to footballschedules.com and pull up the actual team someone plays, you always find out that's not the case. That's not the case at all.